Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome or welcome back to Chef Vic Cuisine. Today, we're making rhubarb and cheese crostini, an ultra eye-catching appetizer that pairs savory and sweet in the best way. This is a golden crowd pleaser and I can't wait for you guys to try this at home. So, let's get started. So the first part of this dish we're gonna make is the rhubarb sauce. And for that, we're gonna need one cup's worth of rhubarb diced. And when you're slicing it along the length of the rhubarb, you wanna aim for half an inch to one inch thick slices. And if you have some of the outer peel hanging off, you can go ahead and remove that. But don't feel the need to peel every piece of the rhubarb because once we're done cooking down the rhubarb, both the peel and the flesh will merge into one. And in order to get one cup's worth of rhubarb, it normally takes me two large rhubarb stalks. In a small saucepan over medium-high heat, or 375 degrees Fahrenheit, or 190 degrees Celsius, you want to add in your diced rhubarb with one tablespoon of water, two tablespoons of granulated white sugar, and about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Now you want to allow the rhubarb to cook, while stirring it often to ensure that all of it cooks evenly. And you're gonna notice the pot's gonna to begin to steam and that's gonna aid in making the rhubarb soft. And after about eight minutes, the rhubarb is gonna break down and incorporate with the rest of the ingredients. Your goal here is to make sure you don't burn this sauce. So stirring it constantly is vital during this step. So once your sauce has formed and it looks like so, you wanna remove it from the heat and add in a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract followed by one tablespoon of honey stirring those in to create your rhubarb sauce and once the consistency is like so you want to set this aside while we prepare the rest of the ingredients for this dish now this sauce alone is delicious and you can always feel free to go back to this recipe to use this to create a rhubarb jam that you can put on toast or whatever you think you could use this for as a meal. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying the video thus far. If you could help me out, I'd really appreciate it if you smash that like button for me. It'll help boost this video's performance in YouTube's algorithm and allow more people to see this recipe. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button too and click the bell icon to be notified when my next video drops. And stay tuned until the end of this video for a sneak peek of the recipe coming next week. Moving on to the toast side, we want to slice one French baguette in half lengthwise and create one inch thick slices cutting along the bias or diagonally. And using one French baguette should easily yield you about 24 slices. You now want to transfer your slices onto a parchment paper lined baking sheet and drizzle them all with some olive oil over each slice. And don't feel the need to drench them with the oil. Coating one side of each slice is quite enough. You want to bake these in your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. And once that time is up, you want to remove them from the oven and let them cool down to room temperature. But while those are baking, we can prepare the rest of the ingredients. Starting off with the pistachios, we need about half a cup of shelled salted pistachios for this recipe. And for this, we're just going to roughly chop them using a sharp knife. And for the best results of chopping, I like using a large chef's knife using the rocking method to roughly chop the pistachios into tiny bite-sized pieces. For these crostinis, we're also going to have rhubarb chunks on top. And so for that, we're going to need another cup of rhubarb diced into half inch thick pieces. So similar to the last stalks we cut, you want to cut along the length of the rhubarb. But this time, you want to double back with your knife and cut those slices in half to create smaller bite-sized chunks of rhubarb. You want them small enough to fit on each toasted slice. Transfer your diced rhubarb to a parchment paper lined baking sheet and drizzle them all with two tablespoons worth of olive oil over each rhubarb piece. And then following that, you wanna sprinkle them with a thin layer of salt and black pepper over all the pieces. 
toss them all to evenly coat them and in your oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 232 degrees Celsius you want to cook these for four to five minutes and once those have cooked we're ready to now assemble our crostinis so to start us off we're gonna need in total about four ounces worth of goat cheese and you want to spread one tablespoon's worth of goat cheese onto each toasted bread slice. Following that, you're going to top it with a quarter to half a teaspoon's worth of our prepared rhubarb sauce. Topping that with one tablespoon's worth of our diced rhubarb and then a sprinkling of our chopped pistachios. As a final touch, you want to drizzle the top of everything with honey. And now you just want to repeat those same steps for all the remaining sliced toast. These make an amazing hors d'oeuvre option. And this recipe is perfect for entertaining a large crowd as well. Taking a bite into all these flavors at once will send your taste buds through a journey of savory and sweet flavors with an ultimately satisfying finish. And once all your crostinis are set, they're ready to be served and enjoyed. And just like that, you've made rhubarb and cheese crostinis. This is really an eye-catching dish that's easy to put together, and I can't wait to see you guys try this at home. When you do, make sure to tag me at Chef Vic Cuisine or hashtag Chef Vic Cuisine so I can see how yours turn out. And a variation on this recipe, if you wanna try it for a more savory dish, you can always omit the sugar, vanilla, and the honey when you're making the rhubarb sauce. And saying rhubarb so many times in this video, I had to bring up my friend Susan Keefe at Rhubarb and Cod. She is an amazing recipe developer. You have to check out her channel and tell her Chef Vic sent you. All her recipes are super unique. She has amazing plating ideas. And I'll be first in line when she releases her own cookbook. As always, this recipe and many more can be found in my cookbook, Chef Vic Cuisine Volume 3, Upgrading Your Inner Chef. And that's available on Amazon, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that in my description box. And feel free to click the link on the screen for more information on that as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this appetizer. And if you did, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Victor, and welcome to Chef Vic Cuisine. I like to share delicious recipes each and every week that you can make for you, your family, or your friends. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button too. And sharing is caring, so if you like this recipe and think someone else will too, feel free to share this with all your family and friends. And stay tuned for next week where I share how to make a classic lunch option, a tuna melt. Super easy and packed with flavor. I can't wait for you guys to check out this recipe. Well, thanks again for watching. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are all the best. Check out more recipes on my page now. YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so let's see if they're right. And I'll see you next time on another episode of Chef Vic Cuisine. And until then, peace.